Hey everybody, my name is Pastor Ken. I'm the lead pastor here at Crossover Church. I want to thank you for worshiping with us online. If you're watching this message, we've been in a series entitled Rejoice. We're just flipping through the pages of Philippians and the theme of Philippians is joy, rejoicing, and gladness despite the circumstances that we may face. And I don't care what you're going through right now. God is never going to give a command in scripture that we're not able to live out according to the grace that he's given us. Now, here's the difference. For those who follow Jesus, you have joy. You might not be experiencing joy, but you have joy. Why? Because it's a fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, and patience is yours. God provides it in the fullness of his presence is what? joy. So if I'm not experiencing joy, it's probably because I'm not in his presence. See, when I'm in his presence, joy is a byproduct that I can experience on an everyday basis. Now, joy is the noun. Rejoice is the verb. You can't rejoice. That's an action. If you don't exude the joy that has been given to you. So rejoice over and over through scripture. We see this idea of rejoicing. That is why we praise the Lord. We clap, we shout, we dance, we experience God's goodness. So the byproduct of his goodness in our life is rejoicing. It's demonstrating, it's showing how much God means to us. But as we come to Philippians chapter four, this is an interesting passage here because in this particular passage, that peace is provided for those who claim the name of Jesus. But if we're going to experience peace, there's some prerequisites that you and I have to understand so we can experience it. Verse seven of Philippians chapter four from the living Bible says this. If you do this, you will experience God's peace. If you do this, there's over six thousand promises in scripture. But with every promise, there is a premise. You can't experience the promise if you don't first understand the premise. This is a conditional promise that is given to believers that we can experience joy. We can experience peace in every circumstance that we face if we understand the stipulations. Now, Paul, he understood the stipulations. He's in prison, but he's experiencing God's peace because he understands the promise. And so today I want to take just several minutes today talking about the stipulations that you and I need to know so we can understand the peace that God can give us. Would you be interested in that? Well, let's look at what scripture says. Number one, here's the first stipulation. If you want to enjoy the peace that God provides, the first stipulation is this refuse to worry about anything. Refuse to worry about anything. Verse six of chapter four says this, don't worry about anything. <laughs> you have to refuse. You have to make up your mind that you're not going to worry about anything. Now, I already can tell you're disagreeing with that statement or you don't believe that can be a reality. So here's the first thing. If you don't ever think that can be your reality, it will never be your reality. You have to first understand that right now I do worry about things, but God's word says that I don't have to worry about anything. I might as well just claim that as a promise right now. God, I'm not there yet, but I want to get to the place where I don't have to worry about anything. Now, how can I get there? I don't have to worry about anything because God's got it. Because God cares more about what's stressing me out than what is actually driving me crazy. See, we got to understand this. In scripture, it says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, do not worry about tomorrow. Now, if you're like me, you're not only worrying about tomorrow, you're worrying about like next week, next month, next year. He says, stop even worrying about your life. Don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow has its own issues. See, when we're worried about tomorrow, we're not effective living for Jesus today. And this is the promise. 
do not worry about anything. And, and he's going to say that when we don't worry about anything and he gives us the formula that we can experience the peace in our lives. So here's a question for you. What are you currently worried about? Talk to me. What are you worried about today? Is it your finances? Is it your health? Is it your job? Is it your kids? Is it your marriage, relationships? You fill in the blank. He says, don't worry about anything. I'm on the job. You're my child. You don't take care of me. I take care of you. I want you to think about your children if you have them. Can you imagine them being worried about when they're going to eat? Worried about how things are going to come together? No, you being a good parent, you take care of your children. Now, God will take care of us. But this is what I discovered. When we try to take care of every situation for ourselves, then God sometimes will just lift his hands and say, okay, you figure it out. And as the great theologian Dr. Phil says, how's that working out for you? Don't worry about anything. Worrying is a waste of time. It serves no benefit. Worrying does not add a single hour to your life, but worrying can take away hours of your life. So you got a decision to make today. Are you going to worry or are you going to put it in God's hands? That's why the word says, cast your cares unto him. But when we cast our cares unto him and we pray, we got to have faith and believe that God's going to respond and that you and I can have perfect freedom and joy that he promises in his word. What are you currently worried about? If you're going to experience the peace that God provides, number one, don't worry about anything. But here's the second stipulation. Talk to God about everything. <laughs> Talk to God about everything. Look at verse six. It says, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and what? Petition with thanksgiving. Do what? Present your requests to God. So I'm not going to worry about anything, but I'm going to pray. I'm going to petition with thanksgiving and present a request to God. So this is where you have to have a prayer life. See, the reason you worry about a lot is because you never cast your cares unto him. He says in every situation you're worried about, in everything that you're struggling with, you need to pray and petition. That word petition or supplication. It's this idea now of putting in a request to someone, an authority figure, who can handle that request. When you pray, you are taking your children, you're taking your job, your financial situation, and you're putting in a request to someone who has the authority to answer that urgent request that you have. See, that's what petitioning is. It's an urgent request that you're submitting in order for it to get answered. <sighs> Present those requests, not to your boss, not even to your spouse, not your cousin. Present those requests to a authoritative figure that can handle the problems that's driving you crazy. So I got to present my requests to God. I got to take everything that I worry about and I got to talk to God about it because he can handle it. And if you don't think God can handle it and you try to handle it, how far does that get us? And so with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, I'm thanking God for answered prayer because when I put it in his hands, it's already done according to his will. Come on, somebody. I got to present my request to God. I got to submit a ticket to the help desk. <laughs> to remind myself that God is the one that takes care of his citizens. See, in Philippians, I'm a citizen of God. I'm a citizen in the kingdom of God. I'm a citizen of heaven. And so the Lord takes care of his citizens. Look at verse 7 now. Verse 7 says this, And the peace of God, okay, I want the peace of God. How do I get the peace of God? I get the peace of God by by making my request known, by praying and petitioning with thanksgiving and making my request known to God. And once I do that and I'm not worried about it anymore, the peace of God. 
When you pray, you will experience the peace of God. But if you don't pray, you just turn into pieces. And the peace of God, which surpasses, oh yeah, all understanding. So when I pray, the peace of God. Now, Romans chapter 5 verse 1 talks about that we have peace with God. Now that I've been reconciled to God, now that we're on good terms, we're no longer estranged. Now that we're in relationship, I have peace with God, that the punishment that I deserve, the wrath of God, no longer comes my direction. Now I'm living under grace. That's the peace with God. But there's a difference having peace with God because I'm justified. And there's a difference between having the peace of God because I'm prayerful. (laughs) I'm talking about the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. It doesn't make sense to me. I should be worrying about my child. I should be worrying about this doctor's note. I should be worrying about my finances. But I have the peace of God that surpasses the very thing that I used to worry about. And now the peace of God, what is it doing? It's guarding my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. It's guarding my thought life. It's guarding me. It's a gate that is set up that won't allow negativity to penetrate inside of my heart or mind. And that's why I have the peace of God. Come on, somebody. If you want the peace of God, what do you got to do? You got to talk to God about everything. I'm talking about everything. Even the small details of your life that mount up. You got to talk to him about that. See, worrying can only stop when you experience the peace of God. As a man thinketh, so he is. You keep thinking negativity, you will live a life full of negativity. And here's the third prerequisite. If you want to experience God's peace, you got to keep your mind on good things. You got to keep your mind on good things. Look at what the word says. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard from me and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. Paul gives us eight benchmarks or tests on keeping our mind on good things. So is it true? Is it honorable? Is it pure? Is it lovely? So on and so forth. So here's my question. That why are we entertained by things that are not praiseworthy and things that are going to keep our mind focused on him? Isaiah 26, 3 says those who mind stay on him. He'll keep in perfect peace. If your mind is stayed on the problem, (laughs) then you continue to have problems. But if your mind is stayed on having God be the center of your life, then you'll find perfect peace. The decision is yours. There's promises that he gives in scripture. And one is that you can live in perfect peace. And my friend, I want you to experience that. But before you can live in perfect peace, which surpasses all understanding, before you can have the peace of God, You got to make sure you have peace with God because peace with God comes when we're justified by faith. Has that been you? Have you accepted the gospel in your life? The good news of Jesus Christ, that we were sinners and Christ died for us and you accepted his gift. And if you have, he gives you another gift. It's the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. But we need to be prayerful. We need to cast our cares unto him and understand that the Lord is near in everything that we face. I want to give you an opportunity to respond. What are you worried about right now? What is keeping you up? What's driving you crazy? I want you to give it to God. With prayer, with supplications, with petitions, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. If you do that and you don't worry, peace of God will surpass 
all understanding in your life. And I want that for you, my friend. Well, I hope you've been enjoying this series. We're just taking the Bible, nothing fancy, just flipping through the book of Philippians line by line, verse by verse to see what thus says the Lord. The more words you know, the more you grow. And today we talked about rejoicing in peace. My prayer is that you will experience that in your life. Take care.